Um, but on that note, let's go ahead and get started. So finding that space that you want to begin your practice in that feels comfortable for you um, on your back typically, but as you know by now, it doesn't have to be on your back. It can be on your side, it can be seated if that feels more comfortable. So just start to figure out where it is you wanna begin your practice. And then maybe start to make some adjustments with the body if that means maybe even taking a little stretch before you start to settle down. Maybe that means bending or straightening the knees or moving the placement of the arms or the hands. Just taking this time to check in with yourself and notice how you're feeling. And I think it's easiest to start with the physical body. So making your physical body comfortable, making any adjustments you need so that you can feel comfortable here. And then once you feel good in the physical body, that's when you can start to let the mind join, let the mind relax and become comfortable as well. So that might mean putting down something that you've been holding on to, something you've been thinking about, something that's been heavy on your heart or heavy on your mind. Let it, let it wait outside the room for the next hour. Let yourself just kind of put it out of the mind and be really present here on your mat and notice what's going on right now in this moment, which is not much. It's relaxing, it's breathing, it's slowing down. It's all those things that are so good for us. Honestly, that's why we come to our mats. Those, those simple things are the reasons we do mat. We, uh, we do yoga. We come to our mat. Um, all the fancy poses and the crazy stretching, that's all bonus and it's all great, but we come here for the breath, for the slowing down, and for the grounding down. So take a moment now to do that before we start to move. Set that intention if you have one that you are focusing on this week. Maybe it's being present, grounding down, finding balance, finding patience. So I'll take a deep inhale in through your nose, letting the stomach expand. Exhale, let it go through the mouth. And on the next inhale, if you're not already on your back, start to make your way onto your back. Find a full body stretch by reaching the arms over your head. Take a deep breath in. You can kind of wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes a little bit, roll out your ankles and your wrists. I always like to think of this as kind of waking up for the second time today. So if it was rushed and hectic the first time you did it, this is the chance to kind of do it right, do it over again. So on the next breath, start to draw your knees in towards you, wrapping your arms around your shins as you give yourself a little hug. You can rock side to side or make circles to see what feels best for you. The idea is that you're pressing your whole spine down into the mat, so creating a really nice connection from the base of the spine, the tailbone, all the way up to the shoulders. And then let's put both of our feet down on the mat. So right at the base of your spine, your feet are there, your knees are bent the right foot is going to come to the left knee. So kind of making a little triangle shape if you were to look forward between your legs, kind of a little triangle there. Bring your arms out to either side of you and then just let your hips rock from side to side. So this is creating a nice little twist in the spine. I know for me, a lot of times my back will crack or adjust a little bit here. That's good. Kind of creating that movement and that fluidity in the spine. So just going back and forth a couple times. It feels good to pause anywhere and just take a breath or two. You can do that as well. And then as you start to come back through center, that left leg is going to lift up, keeping the right foot on the left knee. Start to draw that left knee towards you, interlacing your hands behind the thigh, flexing through both feet here. So you're getting a nice stretch in the right hip. You can even take your right hand and kind of press that right knee away from you really gently, not forcing it with all your might, but just putting a little extra pressure on it. Getting a nice little stretch in that right hip. And then gently you can place the left knee back down on the mat. The right foot can come back down on the mat and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So the left foot is going to come to the right knee. Your arms can come to either side of you, creating that little T-shape. And then again, the hips rock from side to side. 
twisting through the spine. That left foot comes to the mat, and then the left knee comes to the mat, or towards the mat at least. It doesn't have to be touching, just, just creating that rocking movement. And then as you come back through center, you can lift the right leg up off the mat, flexing through both feet as you draw the right leg towards you, maybe gently pressing the left knee away. And then slowly releasing the left foot from the right knee, drawing both knees in towards you. So coming back into that little ball shape. This time your hands can come behind your thighs and you can start to use your momentum to rock yourself up to a seated position. I always like to remind you that you don't have to rock up to seated. Sometimes that doesn't feel comfortable for your back. No worries, you can just press yourself up. So finding a cross-legged seat, hands can rest on your knees. You kind of do that little side to side rock as you settle in through the hips and the tailbone, allowing the spine to get a little longer. The shoulders kind of press down and back. So take your time to ground yourself down here, letting the eyes close again if they weren't already. We're going to do a little breath exercise here. So you're going to take your right thumb to your right nostril. So you're blocking off that right side. You're going to take three full breaths to the left side as long, as slow, as deep as you can, inhaling through the left side of your nose, exhaling back out through the left side of your nose. You're gonna do that three times, and then you're gonna take the right ring finger, block off the left nostril, and do the exact same thing through the right side. So three long, full, deep breaths through the right side. So if you haven't started already, you can go ahead and do that three on each side. See how long, slow, deep you can make each breath. This is a really great activity or exercise for maybe if you're in public or at work and you're starting to feel a little stressed or a little anxious. You might not be able to hop on the floor and do some yoga, but you can take a few seconds, so maybe a minute, to just take some really good breaths. So once you complete those three rounds on each side, you can return your hands to your lap. Let your chin release forward. Your eyes can stay closed or they can open, whichever you prefer, as you start to lean the head forward and then slowly rolling the neck all the way around, beginning to take full circles with the neck. If that feels comfortable, I always remind you if full circles doesn't feel good, if you have any sensitivities in your neck, it might feel better to just go side to side, that's fine. Move the neck in a way that feels good for you. If you're taking those full circles, make sure you go back in the opposite direction as well. Once you've taken a couple circles on both sides, you can start to make your way all the way back up, lifting the top of the head towards the ceiling. Take a breath in as you roll the shoulders forwards and up. Exhale as you press the shoulders down your back. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, draw the shoulders up. Exhale as you release them back. One more time with your breath. Draw those shoulders up and slowly let them release down the back. We're going to take the right hand behind you. The left hand is going to come to your right knee. So we're twisting to the right, kind of looking towards that right shoulder. Take a breath in and sit up a little taller. And then as you exhale, See if you can twist a little deeper. You can kind of use that left hand on the right knee, pressing it to twist yourself a little further. And then slowly coming back to the other side, the left hand comes behind the body, the right hand comes to the left knee. Take that breath in to lengthen through the spine and then exhale into the twist. Really thinking about twisting the whole spine. A lot of times when we do twists like this, we turn our heads really far, see how far behind you can see, then you end up just turning your neck a lot. But you really want the twist to be starting at the base of the spine and coming all the way up. Try to visualize that. And then slowly as you come back through center, you kind of unravel that spine a little bit. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together coming into a butterfly position, or some people call it cobbler's pose, either way. Bring your feet together, your hands can interlace around your toes. Take a breath in as you lengthen through the spine. And then as you exhale, start to fold forward. 
And you can play around with the distance your feet are from your body. Um, different positions feel better for different people. If you bring your feet closer to you, you're going to feel it more in your inner thighs. If you bring your feet a little further away, you'll feel it in the outer leg a little bit. So feel free to play around and see what feels comfortable or what feels challenging and do that. And then on the next inhale, slowly start to lift all the way back up. We're going to come to a wide-legged seated position. So you can extend your legs out to either side, flexing through the bottoms of the feet. I always like to say it's kind of like you're pointing your toes towards your body or pressing them in that direction. Sit up nice and tall, maybe a little side-to-side -side rock. And then we're going to interlace our hands and start to circle the upper body. So this is getting into the backs of the legs as well as allowing that core and torso and center of your body to start to move a little bit. You can decide the pace you go, you can decide the direction you go, you can go back and forth, side to side. This should feel good for you. This is your warm up. So have the freedom to play and kind of try out what feels good for you. Then on the next breath, we're going to come back through center. You can reach your arms up overhead, flexing the toes. As you exhale, you're going to start to fold forward, walking the hands away from the body. So you're starting to fold forward onto your mat. Being gentle with yourself here. This is a deep stretch. I always remind people, if you're leaning forward an inch or two and you're feeling it, that's perfect. This is early on in the class and it's a deep stretch. So you want to feel that stretch without forcing yourself past it. The idea is that you're using that breath to bring you deeper. Each time you inhale, the spine lengthens. Each time you exhale, you fold. We're going to start to walk our hands over to the right side. So your right hand can come to your right shin. The left arm is going to lift up towards the sky. So almost like you're trying to make an L shape with the left arm and the right leg. Reach the left fingertips up towards the ceiling, looking up towards your left hand. And then we're going to start to fold to the right a little bit. So the left fingertips are now going to start to reach, almost like they're trying to reach over the right toes. Kind of leaning to the right, getting a nice deep stretch on the left side of the body. See if you can press that left shoulder open a little bit more so that you're not folding forward, but instead lifting up. Kind of like you're still trying to look at the ceiling, looking under that left arm. Good. On the next inhale, let's lift all the way back up. And then the left fingertips will come to your left shin or the left hand comes to the left shin. And the right fingertips reach up towards the ceiling. So creating that L shape first with the left leg and the right hand, capital L. <laughs> and then go ahead and make it into that little side stretch by reaching the right fingertips over the left toes. Pressing down through the right hip, rolling that right shoulder open. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way back up again. And you can gently bring your hands down to your lap. We're going to bring the legs together so you can use your hands to kind of press the feet back together. Rock it out side to side a little bit as you settle in here. And then we're going to bring our hands behind your hips. So your fingertips can either be facing your body or facing behind you. It really depends on your anatomy and what feels more comfortable to you. It doesn't matter. I like to have my hands facing me. So we're going to come into an inclined plane from here. You're going to sit up nice and tall. So think about that L shape with the body again, and then gently starting to press the hips up towards the ceiling. So almost like you're in a reverse plank position, pressing those hips up. If it feels comfortable, you can let your head release behind you. If that does not feel comfortable on your neck, just keep looking forward. We're going to hold this for about three more breaths. And then slowly bringing the hips back down to the mat. You're going to bend the knees and kind of just give your upper body or your legs a little hug, folding the upper body over the lower body. Your head can kind of come towards your knees, your stomach towards your thighs as you just kind of fold on top of yourself. And then slowly sitting back up. We're going to do a little core by coming into a bridge pose. So this, I'm sorry, a boat pose. Very summary, boat pose. A nice flat back or straight spine. And then you're going to lean the spine back, still straight, as you lift the leg up. 
So your shins are trying to be parallel to the ground. You can either have your hands on your thighs to support them, you can have your hands on the mat to support yourself, or you can just extend your arms out long. That would be the most challenging option. We're gonna hold this for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, on one. Go ahead and put your feet back down. Do that little forward fold again. And we're gonna do that one more time. So take a breath in and then start to set yourself up for a second round of that. So sitting up nice and tall, create that really long spine, slowly start to lean the back back. And then as you lean back, the legs start to lift up, finding the placement with your hands that feels good for you. And then we're gonna do another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go ahead and put your feet back down on the mat, give yourself that little hug again. And then we're gonna to start to make our way into a tabletop position. So when you're ready, you can turn over onto your hands and your knees, bringing the wrists under the shoulders, the knees under the hips, find a flat back to start, and then you'll start to move through your cat and cow. So on the inhale, stomach releases down, looking up towards the ceiling, on the exhale, rounding the back, pressing the ground away from you. And go ahead and continue to move just like that with your breath. As always, you can add on any sort of movements that feel good, rocking the hips from side to side, shaking the head yes or no, circles, child's pose, whatever feels good. Just move the body, breathe along the way. And then finishing up the round that you're on, we're gonna to start to make our way into a downward facing dog. So your toes are gonna to tuck, you're gonna to start to straighten the legs as you send your hips up and back, beginning to settle into that first downward facing dog by moving in a way that helps you start to settle in. So I always like to start with my feet lifting one foot up at a time and pressing it back down. So our heels are working their way towards the mat. It's okay if your heels are not touching the mat, my heels never touch the mat, but that's what we're working towards. You can bend your knees and then straighten them. That kind of gives you a little more length in the backs of the legs. Your hips are the highest part of the body, so think about pressing them up and back. Nice long spine. On the next inhale, let's roll it forward into a plank position. Shoulders come over the wrists. Exhale, sending it back to your downward facing dog. You're gonna do that two more times with your breath. So you go ahead and set the pace. As you inhale, roll it forward into your plank. As you exhale, send it back to down dog. And one last time, inhale, like a wave, roll it forward. Exhale, send it back. So taking your gaze, start to look towards your hands at the top of your mat, and then taking a bunch of little steps or one big step if you prefer, start to walk your feet towards the top of the mat. Your feet can be about hips width distance apart as you take any forward fold that you like. That could be holding on to opposite elbows, hands behind the head, hands behind the legs with a bend in the knees. Does not matter. Just let it feel good. Let yourself hang like a rag doll for about two or three breaths. And then slowly, one vertebrae at a time, you can start to peel the spine all the way up, reaching the arms up overhead. A little back bend once you get there as you gaze up towards the sky. We're gonna take our hands, interlace your fingers, turn your palms so that they're pressing up towards the ceiling. Bring your feet together, they were a little bit apart, and then gently take it over to the left side so that we're stretching out the whole right side of the body pressing the right hips in one direction and the palms in the other direction, looking under that right arm. And then gently inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, take it over to the opposite side. So roll that left shoulder open and back, looking under that left arm. Think about almost creating like a C shape with the body. And then on the next inhale, lift it back up. As you exhale, we're gonna fold it forward. So big, wide swan dive forward. On an inhale, you can bring your hands to your shins and lift up halfway. 
Find a nice flat back on the inhale. As you exhale, fold forward. The next inhale lifts it all the way up, reach the arms overhead, and then bring your hands back to heart center. Do that one more time. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, swan dive it forward. Inhale, halfway lift by bringing the hands to the shins and finding a flat back. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, lifts it all the way up. Arms reach overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Yeah. Let's add on a little bit from there. So on the next inhale, we'll lift it up again. Exhale, we'll swan dive it forward. Inhale, find that little halfway lift. Nice flat back. This time as you exhale, we're going to step back to a downward facing dog. So you can bring your hands to the mat, walk your feet back to the back of the mat as you settle into your downward facing dog. Maybe you take a little more movement here. Maybe you just start to find some stillness. On the next inhale, we're going to lift the right leg up. Point the toes towards the back of the room. This is called three-legged dog. Down dog, three-legged dog. So pointing that right foot back, we're going to start to draw the right knee towards the nose. So this is one of those tricky transitions. Give it a shot. You're going to step the right foot in between your hands, coming to a low lunge. If that is hard, you're going to use your hand to kind of get that right foot forward. So go ahead and bring that right foot in between your hands. And then taking that left heel, ground that left heel down. So you're on the ball of your left foot now, you're bringing that left heel down. We're gonna start to lift up into a warrior one. So if it feels more accessible, you can bring your hands to that right knee first, and then slowly start to lift yourself up into your warrior one. Okay. So that left hip is pressing forward. So it's squared off with the right hip, your shoulders are relaxed, you're looking forward or up towards your hands. The whole outer edge of that left foot is pressing down into the mat. So that was that little tilt we did or adjustment we did with the foot. Taking one more breath here, so you can bend into that right knee a little bit deeper. And then we're gonna take it back down. So go ahead and slowly start to lower the hands back down to frame out that right foot. Spin back to the ball of the left foot so the heel is lifted again. And then that right foot steps back to downward facing dog. We did it on one side, so we're gonna go ahead and do that same thing on the other side. On the next inhale, that left leg lifts, point the toes towards the back of the room or up towards the ceiling. And then slowly start to draw that left knee in towards the nose, almost like you're trying to give that left knee a kiss. And then you're gonna step the left foot in between the hands. Again, super step. Super challenging transition, so be gentle with yourself as you give it a shot. Now that right heel is gonna ground down and you're gonna slowly lift it up to your warrior one. You can use your knee to kind of prop yourself up and then start to settle into that warrior one, bending into that left knee, relax the shoulders, take the gaze up towards the hands as you press down through the outer edge of that right foot. The right foot is at about a 45 degree angle from the top of your mat. And then slowly bring your hands back to frame out that left foot. Spin to the ball of the right foot. And then the left foot steps back to your downward facing dog. Taking your gaze towards your hands, we're gonna walk the feet back towards the top of the mat, coming back to that forward fold. Take that little halfway lift for space. Exhale, fold a little deeper. So when we do that halfway lift, we're kind of giving ourselves more room to fold. Get a little deeper fold. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way up. Arms come up overhead, big, tall stretch. Exhale, hands can come to the sides of the body. Good. Okay, from here, we're gonna take a breath in and reach the arms up overhead again. This time as you exhale, you're gonna sit back into your chair pose. So the hips are pressing back. The weight is in your heels. You could be wiggling your toes because you're really light in the toes. Your weight is pressing back. The spine is lengthening. And we're gonna bring our hands to heart center and we're gonna do a little twist. So you're gonna start to twist the upper body to the right. Try to bring that left elbow towards the outer edge of the right knee. 
doesn't have to touch it, but that's kind of the direction you're working towards. See if you can keep your knees together. That left knee is gonna try to go way out in front of the right knee. So try to keep those knees kind of zippered up together. That left elbow is reaching towards the right knee. The last step is to look up. So you're looking towards the right shoulder or right elbow. On the next inhale, we can unravel that. So go ahead and untwist, start to stand up, reach the arms up overhead. And then hands come back to heart center. We're going to add on from there. The left foot is going to lift. So we're bending through that left knee. So we're balancing here. You have two options from here. We're stepping back to a high lunge. So if you want to really challenge yourself, you're going to work on stepping that left foot right to the back of your mat. If that sounds a little bit wobbly or crazy, Instead of doing it with that leg lifted, 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 the left leg lifted, just go ahead and step it back. So you can kind of decide how you get there. But either way, we're coming to a high lunge. The right knee is bent. You can go ahead and lift your arms up overhead. Good. Take your gaze towards your hands. So the difference between this pose and our warrior one is that now that left heel is lifted. It's not on the mat. You're just on the ball of the left foot. From here, we're going to slowly lower it down to a low lunge by bringing your hands to frame out that right foot. So bringing the hands back down to the mat. The left hand is going to stay where it is. As you exhale, you're going to lift the right arm up, taking your gaze towards that right hand. You're twisting open here. And then slowly that right hand comes back down to the mat. The left knee is going to come down, untuck the toes. As you exhale, press the hips back and start to fold over that right leg. And we're going to move here a couple times. This one, I do it pretty often because I think it feels so good for the hips. So as you inhale, you're going to press the hips forward, start to lift up through the upper body. As you exhale, press the hips back, straighten that right leg. Go ahead and continue to move just like that, getting into those hips. If the ground feels far away, I've said it a million times, but blocks, blankets, books, whatever helps bring that ground a little closer to you, you can rest your hands on something. And then the next time you come forward, we're going to come into our crescent lunge or Anjani Asana. So those hips press forward. Your hands can either come up to your knee, if that feels good, or they can reach all the way up towards the sky, relaxing the shoulders, take the gaze towards your fingertips. Getting a nice deep stretch. Think about pressing that left thigh towards the mat. And then slowly bringing your hands back to frame out that right foot. We're gonna tuck the left toes back to that low lunge and then we're going to step it up to a forward fold. So the left foot is going to step back to meet the right. Take that little halfway lift with your hands on your shins. Exhale as you fold. And then inhale, lift it all the way back up. And exhale, hands can come to the sides of the body. Good. So I told you that was going to be a little challenging one. So you know what's coming now for the other side. So at least you kind of know where we're going. Give it a shot and have fun with it. On the next inhale, lift the arms up. As you exhale, sit back into that chair. So we're lengthening through the spine, the weight is in the heels. Bring your hands to heart center, and then we're gonna find the twist this time to the left. So start to turn to the left, that right elbow comes towards the outer edge of the left knee. Now the right knee is trying to come forward, so try to press that right knee back so that they're squared. Think about your legs being glued together so they can't separate or go in front of each other. Looking towards that left elbow and then on the next inhale go ahead and unravel it, straighten the legs, reach the arms back up overhead and then your hands are going to come to heart center. Let's all find that balance by lifting the right leg up. So even if you're not going to come into your high lunge from here, go ahead and give it a shot just because it's good to practice balance. I'm over here wobbling on my mat so give it a try. 
And then however you want to come to your high lunge, you can. So either start to kick that right foot back and step it back, or if that feels like you're going to fall over, <laughs> we don't want that. So then just step the right foot back, however it feels comfortable. But meet me in that high lunge with that left knee bending, the right foot is back. Take a breath. See if you can bend into that left knee a little more. The deeper we have a bend in that knee, the easier it's going to be to come into that low lunge in a moment. So taking one more breath here, and then we're going to start to lower down into that low lunge, bringing your hands to frame up that left foot. Be mindful that the left knee stays over the left ankle. We don't want that knee going way out in front of the foot. That's when we get knee injuries and that's not good. The right hand is gonna stay down as you exhale, the left arm lifts up. So start to look toward those left fingertips. As you press the left shoulder back, think about a string attached to your sternum, drawing the chest up towards the ceiling. And then slowly that left hand comes back down onto the mat. The right knee comes down, untuck the right toes. As you exhale, straighten the left leg and fold over that left leg. And then go ahead and start to move there. Inhale, pressing the hips forward. Exhale, pressing the hips back. So as always, this is a warm up for you. So do what feels good for you. If it feels better to just kind of stay in one of those shapes. Take a couple breaths like that, you can do that. If rocking back and forth feels better, then do that. <laughs> the next time we come forward, we'll all come into our Anjani Asana. So pressing those hips down a little further, start to lift up through the upper body. Hands can rest on the knees or they can reach up towards the ceiling. Taking your gaze up towards the hands, maybe bending back just a little bit if that feels comfortable. And then slowly starting to bring the hands back to frame out that left foot. We'll tuck the right toes, straighten that right leg back to a low lunge. And then you're stepping, stepping it back to a forward fold. Right foot comes up to meet the left. Hands come to the shins as you take that halfway lift on an inhale. Exhale, fold into that space you just created. And then the next inhale lifts us all the way up. Arms come up overhead. And exhale, hands come to the sides of the body. Take a minute to grab a sip of water, to dance, to shake it off, whatever you need. And then we're gonna come into a Tadasana, a mountain pose. So for that, you're going to find a nice firm foundation with your feet. You kind of rock forwards and backwards on your feet a little bit, really grounding down into the earth. And start to close your eyes. Start to let that breath slow down a little bit. We just did a little bit of a challenging sequence, so now let yourself kind of come back after that. Or bring yourself back. Feel the legs really strong and straight. Feel your tailbone gently tucking under the body, so making those little tiny adjustments. Standing up a little taller as you tuck that tailbone under. And feel the spine long and lengthening, supporting the whole body. Feel yourself get a little taller as you lengthen the spine. Your arms are resting gently at the sides of your body. You don't have to be stiff and tight. We're a mountain, we're strong, but we're also flexible. We can move. Let your shoulders roll down and back. Maybe even taking a breath in, drawing your shoulders up towards your ears and then exhale, let them roll down the back. Feel yourself get a little taller again. And then last but not least, bring your chin so that it's parallel to the ground. So you're not leaning forward, you're lifting your head. Think about a string drawing the top of your head up towards the ceiling. Again, feel yourself get a little taller. Now that we're in really great alignment for a breath, Go ahead and take a deep inhale into the nose, filling up the stomach, feel that expansion. And then as you exhale, let it go out through the mouth. Do one more like that if it felt good. Really deep inhale into the nose. And then let it all out. Good. And slowly start to open your eyes when you're ready, making your way back to the top of your mat if you weren't there already.
coming to the top of your mat. Now that we're really nice and grounded, let's do a little bit of balancing. We're going to ground down through the right foot, lift the right hand up. We're coming into a dancer pose. So you're gonna take the left foot in the left hand and you're balancing now because you are standing on one leg. So if this feels good enough, this is enough of a challenge for today, you're gonna to stay right here, holding the top of that left foot with the left hand. You want to add on, think about a seesaw. You're gonna to start to kick the left foot away from the body, lifting that left leg. The front of the body will naturally start to lean forward. So rather, a lot of people just start to like lean the body forward. You want to also create that little kick back with the leg. You're pressing the left foot away from the body. Give it a try. If you come out of it, come right back into it. And then slowly start to lift it back up. Left leg can come down to the mat, shake it out. And we'll take it over to the other side. So this time the left arm lifts, that left foot grounds down. If this feels really challenging, I didn't say it before, but you can also stand with the wall to your left side. So you can kind of hold on to the wall or just know it's there. Sometimes that's helpful even if you never use it. So we're gonna lift up that right foot. This time, take the top of the right foot with the right hand. Once this feels sturdy enough, you can go ahead and start to kick that right foot away from you. And like that seesaw, the upper body starts to press forward. Think about reaching the fingertips in front of you, like you're trying to grab for something that's off the top of your mat. Holding it for about two more breaths. That's the key, breathing here rather than holding our breath, which sometimes we do in challenging poses, especially balances. And then slowly go ahead and lift it all the way back up. Right foot can come down to the mat, shake it out, let it go. Awesome. We're gonna step the left foot all the way back, coming into our first warrior two of your practice tonight. So the left foot is parallel to the back of the mat. The right toes are facing the top of your mat. As you inhale, you're gonna lift your arms up, right fingertips are pressing forward, left fingertips are back. And then as you exhale, bend into that right knee. So your hips are facing the left side of your mat. You're looking towards that front right middle finger. We're gonna come into a peaceful warrior by flipping the right palm so the right hand is facing up reach the right fingertips forward, give yourself some length, and then start to reach that right arm up and overhead, the left hand gently rests on the back of the leg, the right fingertips reach back, continuing to bend into that right knee. So that's the key, sometimes we start to straighten that right leg, continue to bend into the right knee. And on the next inhale, slowly coming back up to your warrior two, just for a transition, and then we're gonna come into an extended side angle pose. So your right elbow is gonna come onto your right knee. The left fingertips are gonna to start to reach towards the top of the mat. So think about bringing the left shoulder towards your ear, looking under that left arm. This is a challenging pose. So if you're feeling it, you're not alone. On the next inhale, back to your warrior two, again, just for a transition, and then go ahead and straighten that right leg. That should feel good after having it bent for so long. Starting to find triangle pose, right fingertips reach forward, create that length, and then the right hand comes down, the left arm lifts up as you look up toward the left fingertips. And the next inhale, slowly lifting up through the upper body. And then turn the right toes to face the side of the mat. We're gonna take a wide-legged fold. So as you inhale, lift the arms up. As you exhale, fold it forward. As always, take any movement that feels good here for you. Bending the knees from side to side, walking the hands from one leg to the other. Doesn't matter. Whatever feels good, maybe just kind of letting the body hang like a rag doll. And then from here, we're gonna slowly come back to a low lunge. We're gonna do one more little 
tricky balancing pose. So we're gonna start to walk your hands to frame out the right foot as you come to a low lunge at the top of your mat. So you're gonna kind of swivel your feet until you're on the ball of the left toes and the right toes are facing forward. Back to that low lunge. Good. From here, we're coming into a warrior three. So in a warrior three, the right foot is the standing foot or the foundation. So your weight is gonna to start to come into that right foot. You're gonna to start to lift the left foot up off the mat. So play around, your hands are on the mat as well. <laughs> play around with that, start to gently shift the weight to the right leg as you start to lift the left foot up off the mat and see how it feels. Maybe you play around with just lifting the toe up a little bit. Eventually, maybe that left foot is parallel to the ground or that left leg is parallel to the ground. But see how it feels. Give yourself a chance to play, a chance to challenge yourself. Um, so this is called supported warrior three with our hands still on the ground. If this feels like you got it and you want more now or eventually, you would bring your hands to heart center. Maybe even one hand. Sometimes that's like a nice transition, bring one hand to heart center, one hand stays on the mat. So you decide where you're going today. This is another great pose to have blocks or something too. If you feel like the ground is really far away, you can bring your hands to something that's a little higher. Let's all find a forward fold. We've been here for a while. So the left foot comes down to meet the right. Bring your hands to your shins. Take a little halfway lift, length of the spine. Big exhale, let it go. And then on the inhale, lift it all the way back up. Your hands can come to the sides of the body as we start to find that warrior two on the other side. So this time, your right foot is gonna to step to the back of the mat. Left toes are facing forward. That right foot is parallel to the back. Take a breath in as you lift the arms up. As you exhale, bend into that left knee. The knee is coming over the ankle. The arms are parallel to the ground. That left thigh is working on becoming parallel to the ground. Your shit, your chin is parallel to the ground. So lots of angles here. On the next inhale, let's find that peaceful warrior by flipping the left palm, reach the left fingertips to the top of the mat, and then go ahead and reach that left arm up and over your head, continuing to bend into that left knee, really soft in the right hand. So the right hand can be resting on the back leg, but you're not like leaning all of your weight into that because then you're gonna potentially hurt that knee. Always looking out for our knees. On the next inhale, back to your warrior two, just for a transition before we come to that extended side angle. The left elbow is going to come towards the left knee. The right fingertips are reaching towards the top of the mat. So right shoulder towards your right ear. Think about one long line on the whole right side of the body. On the next inhale, back to your warrior two. And then you can go ahead and straighten that left leg. Setting up for our triangle pose, the left fingertips reach forward. And then that left arm comes down, right hand lifts up as you look towards the right fingertips. And on the next inhale, go ahead and lift the upper body up, turn the left toes to face the side of your mat. One more time, big wide-legged forward fold. As you exhale, take it down. Maybe you find a different little movement that feels good here. You can walk your hands away from you or behind you. And then we're going to start to come back to that low lunge. So the hands are going to start to walk towards that left foot. The left toes are going to face the top of your mat. You're going to spin to the ball of the right foot. And then we're transitioning to that warrior three again. So the weight starts to come into the left foot. The hands are on the mat. Maybe you bring the hands to those blocks or hooks or something to kind of give yourself that elevation, that height. And then gently starting to lift that right foot up off the mat. Try to use the core to kind of lift you rather than kicking that right foot up and using momentum. You want to use that body strength. So same thing as I said on the other side. If that means just kind of even keeping the right toes on the mat, that's fine. If that feels like enough, eventually that right foot is going to lift up some more. 
and then maybe you play around with bringing one or both hands to heart center. Maybe they stay right on the mat. You get to decide. Let's all find a forward fold by bringing the right foot to the left foot. Hands come to the shins, halfway lift. Exhale as you fold. On the next inhale, lift it all the way up. Big, nice stretch. And as we exhale, we're gonna take it right back down, forward fold. Go ahead and bring your hands to the mat as you start to step back to your downward facing dog. And then we're going to come to a seated position from here. So you can go ahead and lower down onto your knees and then eventually just start to swing your legs out in front of you, extending them long on the mat to a staff position with those feet flexed. You kind of rock your hips from side to side a little bit. Sit up nice and tall. Let's do our pigeon from a seated position tonight. So the right foot is gonna come onto the left knee, creating that little upside down figure four shape. Your hands are gonna come to the sides of your body. Sit up nice and tall. If you're feeling it in your hip, you're gonna stay here. If you're not feeling it just yet, the left foot comes to the mat. Really use the hands to kind of press up through the spine, lengthen the spine. And then you're just gonna keep walking the foot towards you or walking the hip towards the foot until you eventually feel a stretch in that right hip. It'll be different for everyone. So whenever that hip starts feeling like it's getting a little stretch, that's where you can stop. We're gonna hold this for about five breaths. Maybe you close your eyes here. Deepening the breath a little bit. Coming back to that intention that you set. And then slowly starting to slide that left foot back down onto the mat. If you had the left knee bent, you can extend the right leg long, kind of rock the hips from side to side a little bit and we'll take it over to the other side. The left foot is coming to the top of the right knee, really flexing through that left foot a lot. Left hands come to the side of the body. And then if you're not feeling it yet, right knee starts to bend. It might be really different on this side from the other side. That's totally normal, totally fine. So don't say, oh, I got to this point on this side, I have to go on the other side. Listen to this side and see. See what feels good for this side. And then slowly you can slide that right foot back down onto the mat, extend the left leg, and kind of tap the backs of the legs on the mat a little bit. If you're not at the top of your mat already, go ahead and bring your feet right to the top so that when we start to lower ourselves down, you don't roll off your mat. Extend your arms out long and then one vertebrae at a time. Start to peel the spine back down onto the mat. Take a nice big full body stretch once you get there, reaching the arms overhead. Deep breath in through the nose. Exhale it out the mouth. You can start to bring your hands to the sides of your body as we set up for a bridge pose, our back bend of the evening. So the feet come to the base of the spine, your knees bend, your hands are at the sides of your body. And then when you're ready, you can take a breath in and start to press those hips up towards the ceiling. So your hands are either pressing into the mat or you can start to wiggle your shoulders under the body and interlace your hands under the tailbone. So see which feels more comfortable. Either option is fine. You're getting that bend in the back. Your legs are engaged. Your knees are kind of parallel to each other rather than just sort of flopping off to either side. <laughs> Keep them nice and active. And then slowly, one vertebrae at a time, you can start to peel the spine back down onto the mat. Once your tailbone touches, the knees can rock from side to side. Think about a little windshield wiper action.
and then gently starting to draw the knees back in towards you. Give yourself a little hug as you wrap your arms around your shin, lifting the head up off the mat. Your forehead can come towards your knees. Gently placing the head back down on the mat. We'll come to our inversion. So as always, the wall is an option. If you like to extend the legs up the wall, if you like to do legs up the wall without the wall, you're gonna do it right where you are. Start to reach the feet up towards the ceiling. Your hands can either come behind your thighs to kind of hold the legs up a little bit, or they can come under the tailbone. So whichever feels more comfortable, whichever gives you that support that feels good for you, then that's the option. So we're going to take about 10 breaths here. Your eyes can close. Allow the body to start to slow down a little bit, even if you're not feeling it specifically. When we come into our inversions, our body starts to kind um, of calm down a little bit. It creates a calming sensation throughout the body. Just focusing on your breath, maybe thinking about that intention that you set. as much time as you like here. If you have the legs up the wall, you might want to hang out a little longer. That's fine. You might want to stay there for your Shavasana because it feels really good. That's fine as well. But if you don't have the wall, your legs are probably getting tired. So go ahead and start to draw your knees back in towards you. Give yourself one last little hug. Rock the legs from side to side. Make those circles. And then begin to journey into your final pose of the evening, into your Shavasana whatever that's going to look like for you and doing whatever it is you need along the way. So if there's any other stretches or twists or bends that feel good for you, go ahead and do that now. If there's a sip of water you need or a blanket or pillow or something like that that's going to make you feel comfortable, gather up all of those things so that as you start to settle into your Shavasana, you can feel really comfortable, really relaxed and really peaceful. Taking as much time as you need to get there and then allowing yourself to start to let go once you do get there. The eyes can close if they're not already. The breath can start to move more freely through the body throughout the whole practice. You're focusing on inhales and exhales and moving with the breath but now just let all of that go and let the breath do what it does. Let yourself surrender a little deeper, being fully supported by the earth and the mat beneath you. You can completely let go. Maybe that means letting the shoulders soften a little bit, letting the back of the head sort of melt into your mat letting the jaw soften. Let go of any tightness in the core. And as you start to let go, allow yourself to kind of float here on your mat in Shavasana.
slowly beginning to deepen your breath. Beginning to invite gentle movement into the body, starting with the fingers and the toes, the wrists and the ankles. Stretching in a way that feels good for you. Maybe that means bending the knees if they were straight or straightening them if they were bent in a big full body stretch. And turn over onto your side if that feels comfortable if you were on your back. Take these last few moments here. Say thank you for coming back to your mat. Making that commitment to yourself to do something that's so good for you. When you're ready, you can slowly begin to transition back up to a seated position if you weren't there already, gently pressing your hands into the mat as you lift the upper body up, bringing your hands to heart center. As always, I'm so grateful for you for tuning in, for joining me virtually, for bringing that energy with you. And I hope you have the most beautiful evening, beautiful weekend ahead until I see you all again. Namaste. Thank you guys.